Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 59 of the Nope Coach podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg, joined once more by the amazing Claire McKinnon. And we are going to talk about unniching. So (laughs) if you're not in business, you might, let's start with the definition of niche. Neither of us are marketing experts. (laughs) If you are, you might be like, (laughs) what the hell these two think they're doing? But anywho, in, in the world, according to Suze, the niche is people that you serve and and you know the people you want to work with attract into your business and depending on how many activities you do in how many places and with how many marketing people some people will niche on demographics like they're 40 to 50 years old and they live on this side of thing and and some people will niche on you know psychographics and all this sort of stuff but basically the people that you're talking to in your business and I love that we're doing an episode on unniching Because the response I'm getting from this Nope Coach podcast, all sorts of people listen to my show. I've had Mm. messages from dudes and, you know, ladies as I've traditionally worked with of all ages from all around the world. So, yeah, before we get into unniching, Claire, how would you define niche? Yeah, everything you've said. And it's like, what's the problem you help people solve? So everything you create being in some way speaking to that, you know, and it. It, it becomes quite focused. So the advice we're given when you're niching is don't try and appeal to everybody. Picture that. You speak to everyone, you'll speak I, to no one. <laughs> exactly. But instead, think of the ideal person you'd love to work with, the, the ideal person you want to help and write, make a podcast or whatever for that person. So that's how and I I'm see it. And I'm not knocking or like, you know, everything has a place. So whenever yeah. Suze gets on a rant, I'm never, ever knocking anybody, you know, if that's had value and works for you, like, great, continue to do it. You do you. But sometimes the more specific we get, and this is what we were talking about or alluding to in our last episode, is then you might realize you've gone a long way in and you don't actually love the thing anymore. (laughs) Or it's not enough. Like, I feel like there's something for me. And when I, you know, I honed in, I did a lot of work on, my niche which is and still is this is how I earn uh, my income is serving leaders and organizations helping them lead with more heart more courage more authenticity and I am passionate about that work I am and it's not all of what I want to express and I think it's just very easy to it, it was almost like work and career subsumed all my creativity And had it all go into that. And that was what led me to start Glitter and Biscuits, which which is what we were talking in the last episode. But there was part of me that just actually wanted to break free of that and explore and and, and really liberate myself from that belief that everything has to be about that niche. Um, And at my, I'm a bit of a good girl, recovering good girl, recovering pleaser. (laughs) So it's like when someone says, and there's, you know, there's an expert who in particular, I just love everything he does. And he's like, niching is the key. Niching is the key. Like the good girl I am, I, you know, really took that literally. And then I think part of me, and I think it is my soul, it was saying, "Mm, yes. And there's this whole other part of you, Claire, that, and there's something here if you follow and explore it. So two thoughts come to mind as you were just speaking. The first is... And if anybody listening is a author of like fiction or something, please email info at suzannekohlberg.com. I'm curious about your insight on this. And if you want to come on the show, let me know. I wonder how many authors who then have another pseudonym or penonym or, you know, like where they keep themselves anonymous to write in a completely different genre just Mm. so they can fulfill that urge, itch, need. Because sometimes you get typecast, like you write romance or you write Mills and Boone or you write murder mysteries. And then, no, I want to write a sweeping piece from historical something. I wonder if that's why they do it under something completely different. So that gives them that freedom to do that. And the second piece is, and depending on viewpoints of people listening, sometimes, and I know that I can do this too, if I put too much on my business, Like, you know, differentiating my business from me, like my business is in that pays the bills and allows us to live the lifestyle that we have versus trying to push everything into it. Like sometimes as entrepreneurs or serial entrepreneurs, it's like 
could you have a hobby for the sake of having it? Like, does this have everything have to be income producing? And I think some people who are really strong on the niche might think, well, maybe this other thing is not related to your business. And I don't think it's any right or wrong. And the whole idea of this whole note coach show isn't to be like, you have to do it like this. No. It's the anti-prescription because being performative is what gets a lot of us stuck in these good girl, people pleasing things. Absolutely. But you know, it's, there's a difference between, am I doing this? Because like for me, my original niche was weight loss coaching. And I felt very much pushed into it because I'd had a personal weight journey. Mm. That didn't mean that I loved coaching on that. I was competent. Yes, more than competent. I was highly skilled, but it wasn't like, this is what I want to do all day, every day. So I think Mm. sometimes when we niche based on a skill or based on something that we've done well, or we've mastered, that doesn't mean it's the truth of our heart. Yeah. Oh God, I could not relate to that more. And when I think about this, you know, my background is in corporate. I found it a soul sucking place. A lot of the time I want to help people who are in that place, experience it differently. And there's this whole other part of me that you know, if I hadn't gone into corporate, would have been doing something very different. And, you know, I did a music degree. I used to dance as a girl. I would see myself, I I see myself as a creative person that almost had that sucked out of her by the choices that I made. And it feels like now it's like, I don't, I think it is a blend of things I do in my leisure time. And what I can feel emerging is that, you know, I have have many, many years left, hopefully on this planet. It it feels like something else is emerging that may become my work, but I don't want to force it. I don't want to sit down and fill in one of those marketing niching forms that says, (laughs) okay, this thing you're writing, who's it for? What's the purpose? The purpose is right now, I want to express myself. I want to tell stories that may touch other people, that may inspire them, that may give them permission. Um, As a woman, I feel like I've shut that voice down for far too long. And this is part of me, my practice in reclaiming that and practicing that and experimenting. And it's given me confidence as I do that. And I can feel like this is a, it's almost like an offshoot of my path that I'm taking now. And I'm the primary income earner in my household. And you know, my other work is a stable form of income because my business is well established. So you don't have to tear that. You don't have to tear anything down to unleash and follow. Yeah, old ways of being don't need to be destroyed for no. new ways of being to be born. You can walk exactly. with both. And as yeah. long as you are, you know, like, yes, this is my bread and butter. This is my nine to five. This pays the thing for now. And then follow the creative side. And then eventually, so for me, when I first was re-niching, I didn't close my weight loss coaching entirely. And if someone comes to me still and wants to work one-on-one, um, we'll have a chat. And I do still do some one-on-one coaching purely on that. But it it's just like, you don't have to, I think sometimes people take the leap too soon, especially into entrepreneurship. I quit my corporate job and I quit my stable income and I had a buffer and now it's quickly running out. And it's like, yeah. get the get the runs on the board and established in the thing and then find the middle way rather than just being leap and hoping a net will appear. And, and something else as well, like a, a friend of mine said this to me a couple of years ago when I just, and it was before Glitter and Biscuits, but when I was really finding my groove with writing, a story I carried was one of regret. Oh, I've sold out on my creative dream when I went and worked for corporate. And I was like almost dragging that behind me. And she said, what if Claire, the work you do now and all the decisions you've made means that you have complete freedom to do what the hell you want with your writing. And that really landed. And I, and, and in the months to come, Glitter and Biscuits was born because that is so true as well. It's like the thing you do to earn money doesn't have to be you know, you don't have to earn money from your creativity. The thing you do to earn money can support you. So then you can have no restrictions with what you're doing elsewhere. Like the two things can kind of coexist. And one of the things I've noticed is that just following and allowing myself to unleash in some of how I'm spending my energy and time is making me feel more excited and energized about the work that I do day to day about my income generating work so this is this lovely relationship between the two um and it just makes it all feel more joyful so i love I that because so you can't skin the field by allowing yourself yes. the space and time to do the creativity and then yeah. with the, from a place of a filled cup 
the thing that you know isn't as exciting or isn't as enticing doesn't it doesn't draw you back because you're getting that cup filled i love that so much so claire uh, yeah. where can oh sorry do you have one more point i was going to say no, i was going to say as well and the, and the work itself it's like the the painting work itself it almost feels like it's cut it's sparked back to life um, i love that because i've had to be more discerning and said yes i'll do that no i won't do that because i know i want to make space for the other so yeah allowing space for both i think that's my yeah. big takeaway from this lesson so claire where can people find you so easiest place to find me is on Substack. So substack.com, just type in glitter and biscuits into the search bar and you'll find my Substack on there. And uh, yeah, feel free to subscribe. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll see you there. I love that. And we said on the last episode, so if you if you haven't heard of Substack before, I'm not going to get into it again, but listen to the previous episode of Claire about following the divine breadcrumbs. And we spoke a bit about that there. So make sure you catch that episode as well. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.